Uh, before the, uh, this part of the service begins, there'll be a collection, as always on Good Friday, taken up for the Holy Land. Thank you for your generosity. Please kneel.
Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him. So marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servants shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience for what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across, across the Kidron Valley 
to where there was a garden, to which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So Jesus again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into your scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside, So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was so cold, and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken to you publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in a temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Are those who heard me what I said to them? They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck him and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, (laughs) At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, (laughs) In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. 
If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to Jesus, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law. According to that law, you ought to die. Because he made himself a Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release Jesus, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, when I hand to Caesar, everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. 
Then Jesus said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, Jesus handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. The tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. The cross. The cross. Our cross. Our crosses. Can appear to be a barrier. A burden. But when you think about it, it's Christ's bridge for us. There are three movements to the three days. It's kind of a good, like a good symphony piece. The first movement, the second movement, and the third movement. The first movement was last night, Holy Thursday. The call to serve. Do this in memory of me. Do what? John's gospel is pretty clear about it. It's to wash one another's feet. In one of my pastorates, it was the coolest experience I ever had because in this parish, for the washing of feet, some do foot, some do feet, everyone came up. And they had two chairs, two chairs, and two chairs, and two people would come up and wash two people's feet, and then went so on and so on and so on. 
believe it or not, there were 450 people in church, and it didn't take all night. But that's truly the point of Holy Thursday. Father Dennis talked about the call of the priesthood to serve in the name of Jesus Christ. But the laity's call is, well, the priesthood as well, is by virtue of your baptism to be Eucharist to one another, the call to serve. Sometimes it's easy to wash one another's feet, but sometimes it's not so easy. And that's where the cross lies. Jesus gave us a model, as we heard last night, if therefore the master and the teacher has washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow. So that as I have done for you, you should also do for one another. It's easier said than done. Because our crosses are always in relationships. And, you know, if everyone would just do everything my way, I'd have no crosses, right? (laughs) And we think that. You know, if my circumstances were different, if she were different, or he were different, or they were different, or this were different, you know, everything would just be fine. The second movement tonight, the cross. Sometimes to stay committed to serve can be a cross. Staying in the relationship, staying staying in the marriage, staying in the friendship. As we hear the gospel proclaimed tonight, Simon Peter and Judas lost their focus. They forgot to stay committed to the Lord, or they lost their way to stay committed to the Lord and to serve the Lord. They forgot to wash the feet of the master, and they kind of went off and did their own thing. The cross can be a bridge. Judas didn't see the bridge. Simon Peter did. Simon Peter, through transformation, was our first pope, right? And he realized his sinful ways and his cross. The third movement, if we stay focused in our baptismal call to serve one another as Jesus has commanded, Do this in memory of me. Then there's new life. And in new life is the resurrection. But for now, let's focus on this second movement, the cross. What thing or things has you stymied, has you paralyzed, Has you angry? Has you blinded? Has you confused? Has you hurt? Bring that to the cross. And don't don't ask the Lord, oh, I wish I didn't have this, take it away. Ask the Lord to teach you. Ask the Lord to transform you. Because that's what the cross is all about for all of us. It's that transformative love as we carry our cross. Our cross doesn't have to be the heavy burden that sometimes we feel and believe it is, but it can transform us. It can change us. It can heal us. It can renew us. It could be that bridge as Christ calls us to be his disciples and do it in memory of him.
let us offer our petitions with the Universal Church as we celebrate this Triduum. For the Holy Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and peace. We may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded. Look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for Bishop Blaise Supich, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for your ministers that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that, having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they, too, may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that, reborn in the fount of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them one in his church. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith 
and united in the body of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Let us also pray for the Jewish people to whom, our, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, Graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you made your own by attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for those who do not believe in Christ that, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they, too, may enter the way of salvation. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be one more perfect witness to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right and sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest, grant, we pray, that Despite, despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of your good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Let us also pray for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hands lies every human heart, and the rights of peoples. Look with favor. We pray on those who govern with authority over us that throughout the whole world, prosperity of people, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to the God, the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all its errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty 
and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. You can stand and face towards the rear of the church. And please kneel. And as we prepare to venerate the cross, uh, th this year you can come forward, but please do not kiss or touch the cross. As you come forward, take a bow, take a genuflection, maybe hold out your hand over the cross, but do not touch the cross.
Please come forward.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy of these under my roof, but only say the word. So shall
May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please depart in silence.